My wife and I met in high school, and we've been together ever since our junior year. We both met in art class, and we fell in love over our shared interest in painting. It was both of our dreams to go to art school and eventually be able to sell our work for a living. After high school and college, we did our best to follow that dream. However, being a successful painter is a very competitive career, so we weren't able to succeed on that front. We both got other jobs, and we ended up finding happiness in different fields. One thing about me is that I am a twin. I have an identical twin brother, and it's nearly impossible to tell us apart. It's been a funny joke our entire lives, and we have both gotten used to being mistaken by the people around us. There have even been points in our lives where our partners would come up to the wrong person to say something then we would have to correct them. My wife would always joke about how she almost kissed my brother or how she was worried she might climb into bed with the wrong twin. Everyone just laughed it off because it was an insane idea. My twin would never let that happen. At least that's what I thought. My brother was my best friend in the world. We were the exact stereotype of twins that you can imagine we were. I was the good twin, and he was the evil twin. He was the one who was always getting into trouble while I was there to cover up for his mistakes. He got married about a year after I did. This is not something that I'm proud of by any means, but because he was my brother and I wanted the best for him, I ended up covering for him after he cheated on his fiancé. It was during his bachelor party. He was completely trashed, and he ended up hooking up with some other random woman in the bathroom at a nightclub. He told me about it after like it was the funniest thing in the world. He didn't even remember it the next morning. I talked to him about it, and he begged me not to tell anyone. I agreed to keep the secret, rationalizing it as just a drunken mistake that didn't need to potentially ruin his marriage. All these years later, I can't help but still think about it. It was very easy for him to slip up at the time, so I can't help but wonder if it was the only time. Ever since my brother and I moved away from each other, we started a tradition of having a 4th of July celebration together. We would always alternate between whose house we would go to, and we would go all out for the holiday weekend. It was always nice for us just to be able to get together and catch up too. Everything seemed normal at the beginning of the weekend. We all caught up, cooked on the grill, and set off a bunch of fireworks. All of the adults had some drinks, and it was a fun time. Toward the end of the night, I saw my wife walking up behind my brother to hug him and kiss him. When I saw them, she had just started kissing the back of his neck. Immediately, I yelled at her and said she had the wrong twin. They pulled away from each other quickly and laughed it off. My sister-in-law and I were also laughing. My wife and brother both said that they thought it was their partner. It was a little uncomfortable, but I believed her. Later that night after we had all gone to bed, I heard my wife get up and walk out of the room. I assumed she was going to the bathroom or getting some water. It wasn't anything unusual. But she didn't come back for quite some time. After about 10 minutes, I was curious, so I got up to go look for her. I didn't see her anywhere in the house. I went back upstairs to call her, and that's when I noticed her phone was still on the nightstand. While the screen was lit up, I saw that there were a couple of unread messages from my brother. I picked up the phone and looked at them to realize they were sent just moments before she walked out of the room. I unlocked her phone to look through them, and I saw a message that read, Are you serious about what you said earlier? Because I really do think you're sexy. My wife replied saying that she was serious, and he told her to meet her in the garage. My brother had a detached garage in his backyard, which explained why I didn't see her anymore in the house. Their messages were quite alarming. It was only that brief conversation in the messages, but it definitely seemed like they were about to do something in the garage. I went to the garage as quickly as I could to try to catch them and whatever it was they were doing. As I stepped outside, I noticed that the lights inside the garage were on. When I peeked through the windows I didn't see either of them at first, though I did notice one of the cars rocking back and forth. My gut told me that they were in the car sleeping together. I opened the side door, and I looked inside to see that I was right. I had the foresight to take one picture of them before I opened the door and dragged my brother off of my wife. They were both shocked to see me, but they quickly covered themselves up and tried to apologize. We got into a full-blown screaming match. I was yelling at my brother and threatening to hurt him. My wife was trying to calm me down, but I was yelling at her too. 
Everyone inside the house heard it, so my sister-in-law came running out to see what was going on. When I explained everything, she joined in on the argument too. One of the neighbors actually ended up calling the police because we were fighting. Nobody was charged with anything. The officer that came out just did his best to separate us and calm us down. I ended up driving off alone that night to try and cool down without having to be around my wife or brother. When I got back the next day, my brother and wife had been kicked out of the house. I spoke to my sister-in-law, and she told me that she couldn't be around either of them, so she made them leave. I had countless missed calls from my wife, but I ignored all of them. I talked to my sister-in-law before anyone else to see how she was feeling. Apparently, when she asked my wife why she would do that, she told her that it had always been something she wanted to do. Toward the end of our conversation, I told her about what happened at my brother's bachelor party. She was hurt that I didn't mention anything before, but I think that put the nail in the coffin for her. It just didn't make sense to either of us because my brother and I are identical twins. There was nothing about my brother that I didn't also have appearance-wise. A few days passed and I was back home and ready to have a conversation with my wife. I planned on telling her that we were going to be getting divorced and she had no say in the matter. When I asked her for clarity, she told me that it had always been something she wanted to do. Because we were twins, she wanted to sleep with both of us. She had been curious about how similar we were in different ways. The more she tried to explain herself, the more irritated I was with her. It really just seemed like she had some kind of fetish about it. I reached out to my sister-in-law and asked her about how things were going with her and my brother, to which she told me that she was divorcing him. Both of us went through with our divorces, leaving my brother and wife kind of screwed in the end. My wife was forced to get a second job to cover some of the bills that she would have to take care of on her own. We were only renting, so we didn't have to go through the ordeal of splitting a lot of our assets. We have joint custody of our children now, and we're working to find some common ground between us to give the kids a semi-normal life. I don't talk to my brother anymore. Honestly, that hurts more than anything in this. Everybody else in my family is kind of frustrated with him for causing such a rift as well. OP, I can't believe you had to go through all of this. Having your partner cheat on you is already awful, but with somebody that you're so close with like your own twin brother is devastating. I can't even begin to imagine how it must feel to lose both of them at the same time. Your wife's excuse for cheating on you is absolutely ridiculous. It's unbelievable that she would be so willing to throw away the life she built for a one-time affair just out of curiosity. I agree, it must have been some kind of fetish or fixation that she had. It's such a shame that you also lost your brother when you went through all of this. It seems like the two of you were very close, and it must be difficult finding a new balance in your life. I know your family is going to need some healing before any of you can even try to really talk about this. I hope you're all doing well now and you're able to move forward in the future. Now, let's move on to our next story. My girlfriend and I have been together for five years, and I was planning on proposing to her before all of this happened. We met in college and now that we've both graduated and have good jobs, it seems like it's the right time to take the step forward. She was practically everything I wanted in a partner. She was kind and funny, and she always put other people before herself. I have wanted to start a family practically my entire life, and she seemed like the perfect partner to do that with. She wasn't the first woman that I had been with, but I was the first guy she had been with. Just a little backstory about me, I've never really felt the drive to have sex that a lot of other men do. I see in popular media how it's almost a compulsion that a lot of guys have. I've always felt someone indifferent towards it. Through some friends, I've been able to come to the conclusion that I might actually be asexual. I don't mind sex. I've had it many times, but it's normally something that I do just for the sake of a relationship. When my girlfriend and I first hooked up, she told me that she thought I didn't like her because I never made a move on her. I've never been the one to initiate anything because I genuinely don't think about it. When I told my girlfriend that I thought I might be ace, she was a little bit upset about it. She didn't know what it meant for our relationship if I didn't want to have sex. I understood her concerns and I told her that if she wanted to find someone else who could be more aggressive sexually, then I would support her. Of course, I told her we would be breaking up and we could continue being friends. 
After a long discussion, we decided that we wanted to continue our relationship. Again, I still had sex, and I didn't have a problem with that, so our compromise was that she would just have to be more upfront about when she wanted it. I know this sexuality seems confusing, so just a brief explanation of it before moving on. I am a sex-neutral asexual, meaning that I don't have any aversions to sex, I just don't personally feel a need to have it. Some asexuals are aromantic and don't want any relationships at all. Some, like me, still want to be in a relationship and have a partner. I'm stressing this here because I was very vocal about this after our conversation. I told my girlfriend that if she ever felt like this wasn't working out, I wanted her to tell me so we could move our separate ways. I didn't want her to feel like she was having to sacrifice a part of the relationship to be with me, but I wanted a monogamous relationship. I had no interest in opening anything up so we could still continue our emotional relationship while she was sleeping with someone else. After I told her everything, we got back to normal pretty quickly. A couple of times a week she would initiate sex, and we would have it like we always did. Over the course of about six months, she slowly stopped initiating it. Again, I really didn't think about it much. There was a point while we were watching a television show together, and a sex scene came on that the sudden realization hit me. I asked her if everything was okay, and she told me that it was. I was a little bit concerned when I realized we hadn't had sex. I knew that it was something that my girlfriend thought was important, and she really enjoyed herself. I couldn't help but worry that she was getting that from somewhere else. I let the days pass, and she still hadn't done anything to initiate sex with me. Eventually, I asked her about it outright. She told me that she just hadn't really been in the mood, but assured me that there was nothing going on. I felt comforted hearing her tell me that outright. At least I felt that way until I saw a mark on her neck. It was something that she was clearly trying to cover up with makeup, but the collar of her sweater rubbed it off just a bit. It was clearly some kind of hickey. I didn't say anything right away, instead, I just pretended like I didn't see anything. I knew I needed to try to figure out what was going on before she continued to lie to me. She had recently taken up a yoga class, and after doing some thinking I realized that the dates kind of coincided with when we hadn't been sleeping together. I thought that if she were taking the time to cheat on me, that might have been it. So, I waited for her to tell me she was going to yoga one evening, and I followed her there. I was right to suspect that she wasn't actually doing yoga because she met a guy at a bar. It was hard for me to make out who he was at first because he was facing away from the window, but as they left together I recognized him instantly. He was a friend of hers that we would occasionally hang out with. Because he was her friend, seeing them together wasn't damning in itself. They could have just been grabbing a drink, but I didn't understand why she would lie about going to yoga. I needed to find something more concrete before I went to her with this. I followed them as they went back to what I figured was his apartment. While they were inside, I did a little digging on the guy since I didn't really know him too well. As I did, I remembered that my girlfriend had even been talking to me about how excited she was for his wedding. He had just gotten engaged to another woman. I really hoped that if she was cheating on me with anyone, it wasn't him. Knowingly sleeping with your engaged friend is a crappy thing to do. I couldn't get any information from watching his apartment, so I just went home and waited for her to get back. Before I could even ask her how her evening was, she started telling me about all of the yoga stuff she's been doing. She was lying to me completely. When she went to sleep, I went through her phone to see if I could gather any evidence from there. I went to their text messages and I saw a lot of concerning exchanges. They had sent each other nude pictures, he told her that he would have never gotten engaged if he knew she wanted him, and she talked about how she couldn't understand my sexuality. The tone of their messages felt very judgmental of me and very invalidating. It doesn't seem like it from this post, but having this realization has taken a toll on me. Hearing somebody that I cared about talk about it so flippantly was upsetting. I took plenty of screenshots, especially of the exchanges where he mentioned not wanting to get married, and I sent them to myself. I had no idea who his fiancé was, but after a little bit of research, I found out that she was a recent law school graduate and had just gotten a job at a local firm. I reached out to her to schedule a meeting, making it seem like I had a legal issue. Thankfully, she had one free consultation available, so I took that.
When I met with her, I came clean about why I was really there. I explained to her how I knew her, and I showed her the evidence that I had. She was broken up about it, but she thanked me for telling her before she ended up being legally bound to him for the rest of her life. She had always been concerned about his relationship with my girlfriend. She mentioned that it was obvious to her that they had some kind of feelings for each other, but since they were both in relationships, she didn't think anything would come of it. As I was driving home, I just kept thinking about how they were talking about me, and I didn't feel like telling the fiancé was enough revenge. I wanted to do something to really hurt them. Like I said earlier, I really was planning on marrying her. I had a ring and everything. My girlfriend loved the big romantic displays, so I figured I'd give her one. I knew that the man she cheated on me with was about to get dumped by his fiancé, and I wanted my girlfriend to have a similar experience. I took her out to a nice restaurant, and at the end of the evening, I paid the band to play our song. When it came on, she commended on it, and I told her I orchestrated it for the evening. I got down on my knee, and I started out pretending like I was proposing. She was very excited and smiling while crying. Everything about her reaction made it seem like she would have married me. If that was the case, why cheat on me? I stood up before I asked her the final question, and I told her that was what might have happened if I didn't find out she was sleeping with another man. Her face completely fell, and all of the people who were watching us with happy smiles immediately turned away. I explained how I knew everything, making no effort to keep my voice down. One of the staff at the restaurant actually had to escort us out because we were causing a scene. I broke everything off with my girlfriend after that and kicked her out of our apartment. She has messaged me countless times, begging me to give her another chance. She tried to explain her actions by telling me that she felt like it was my fault. I'll admit, a huge part of it might have been. I didn't even realize we weren't having sex until it had been weeks since we stopped. But I told her from the start that she should tell me if she wanted out. It seemed like she wanted to be with me while also sleeping with the other guy, and I wasn't okay with that. I ended up blocking her number, but she continues to call me from burner numbers that she downloads. I'm planning on changing phone plans to get a new number and moving out of my apartment so she won't know where I am. OP, I'm really sorry you've had to go through all of this. You were vocal about your sexuality when you discovered what it truly was, and you gave your girlfriend the opportunity to leave without any hard feelings. I think given the situation, that was one of the best things you could have done. It's clear that your girlfriend wanted to have her cake and eat it too. It's clear that she had feelings for you and was attached, but she disregarded your concerns about her cheating and lied to you. If she wasn't satisfied with the arrangement you guys had made, then she should have told you and been upfront about it. I can understand having a difficult time learning that your partner is asexual, but it doesn't have to be the end of a relationship, especially since you were still having sex. It really doesn't even seem like her reasoning for having an affair was very strong. Honestly, it seemed like she had feelings for that other guy and used your recent sexuality discovery as an excuse to act on it. I hope you are able to open your heart to other partners in the future, and I wish you nothing but the best. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.